All right, welcome back, everybody. Aesop Grimm here, and this is the continuation of our Endless Space 2 Chronicle. We're playing the tutorial. I just began the countdown timer. We got about 30 minutes. I use it as a guideline, not as a rule. Uh, let's see. We have colonized in Primus. We have five turns until Xenobiology is done. I believe we also have five turns until Xeno Industrial Infrastructure is done. That is correct. We can build more ships. Um, I'm thinking of using this area for that. Maybe not. I don't know how long it takes to colonize. And we are going to need something of a navy eventually. Um, let's wait. Got five turns is a little bit. Let's let's wait in, until Xeno Industry is done, and then we'll start building more of a navy. Let's continue to explore. Why not? I don't know why I can't seem to move. Okay, do I need to send a... Oh, I'm done. I've made my move? Yeah, I'm zero of six. Okay, okay, sorry guys. Here we go. All right, so four turns left and we can move down the pipeline. All right. Three turns. Select. E to one, medium toxic, inhospitable. E to two, small steps, inhospitable. E to three, tiny tundra, inhospitable, but it does have titanium. So this is the kind of system that I would actually probably ignore. I don't know if that's right or not. It's not a premium system. Too few planets and they're too small, right? Your analysis of the subterranean on planet Eta 2 was successful. And we got something called a destructive salvager. Dust per destroyed command point can only be installed on ships. I'm probably not too interested in that. It would take up a spot. All right, let's move down here. And uh, in turn, Aquarius. Aquarius 1 is a huge monsoon and it is co colonizable. Monsoon planet. Aquarius 2 is tiny, arid, and hospitable. And that's it in this system. So even though this is colonizable, I don't know if I would take this. There's something about over colonizing that can give you a penalty, so you want to kind of pick and choose. where you colonize at. All right, well, that's the full circuit right there. This is a closed loop. And it's part of the Serpentis system. Serpents. You control one third, I guess, of the planets needed to own this constellation and claim the control bonus. Maybe that's systems, because there's multiple planets in there. Constellation control bonus will be plus 15% agriculture. Okay, interesting to know. Am I out of remote? Yep. End turn. New luxury resource discovered. Your empire has access to Transvine. 
This strange plant with innumerable tiny crescent-shaped leaves can be safely ingested. It creates a sensation of peace and happiness and is used as a natural relaxant and sedative. It is also a useful tool to keep rowdy populations compliant. I wonder what they might be alluding to here. Effects within a system development upgrade plus 15 approval on system. Okay. Two moves away from here. One move until we're done with research and uh, infrastructure. Research complete. Xenobiology. So we can now colonize Tundra Worlds. And we can build the public-private partnerships, which would be very nice. Let's go to the text screen. So I now have a Tier 1... What, what is this? Uh, Empire Development Tech. I have a Tier 1 Science Tech. Over here... I would... Uh, Maybe take plasma metallurgy. What's in the... Do I get access to any different holes? Grant system improvement and a support module. System improvement and resource improvement. Okay, then... It's between these. Xenolinguistics, whether you wish to make trade... Now, I think that's saying I have that already. Status researched. See now industrial infrastructure. That's the system improvement. That's what we just built. And it also allows us to refine titanium. So we could come down to tier two or we could take plasma metallurgy under carefully controlled conditions. The application. Well, you know what? Actually. I have a tier one tech here. I need to hit this one. Okay. Ubiquitous surveillance. Everyone's safer when nobody has any secrets, right? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Every part of the world is awash with data capture devices. <laughs> From nano cameras to eavesdropping flies to chemical sniffers, not to mention digital trawlers. Oh, Farging A, fellas. Does life imitate art or does art imitate life? I mean, this shiznit sound not too far from where we're at. <laughs> Cost 152 science, political impact, militarists. Big data shipyards. <laughs> okay. Okay. This is fine. System improvement. Uh... Plus 40 initial XP on ships, on fleets, and we get improved recruiting support module. Big data shipyards, building an autonomous construction technology. Shipyards, building on autonomous construction technology. Shipyards are able to integrate data from the Empire's fleets, from deep space, from battle, from stellar anomalies, to construct vessels at the absolute cutting edge of ship design. As a result, new vessels leave the shipyards as if they'd already spent considerable t uh, time in the great beyond. So that's different than what I was thinking. I was thinking of a huge industrial data harvesting complex where s things would be stored. You know, huge storage devices <laughs> collecting personal information because that would never happen. <laughs> Improved recruiting. <laughs> Um, okay. And then over here, we would get access to the impervious bunkers. Lessons from individual armor improvements can be partially adapted to bunker design by layers of protection that are by turns hardened, absorptive, and ablative. Bunkers can be created that are considered to be almost uncrackable. I mean, that seems a little meh to me. We get 150 army capacity. Or I think that's defense army capacity. Yeah, it is. And then plus 100 manpower deployment limit. 
And again, that says defense. And uh, chain gang program citizens who are caught engaging in illicit activities are able to commute their sentences by aiding the military in the development and primarily the live testing of new armor systems. Nikes, man. <laughs> All right, survival suits, weather on the... This is what would lead to these two things being available. Whether on the ground or in space, the survival of skilled, trained, and cybernetically enhanced warriors is critically, both to mission success and to return on investment. <laughs> suits must ensure that the user is unharmed, well-nourished, and able to communicate. Okay, well, between those two, I like this one. So that's what we'll grab. It's going to take six turns. Technology stage unlocked. Technology deed available. Seeker of truths. Technology deed. Xeno industrial infrastructure is done. Xeno biology done. Let's go into Desay. And uh, I want to build. I have one. I want three more. Patrol ships. You know what? I need to take a look. We need to go look at our ship and how it's outfitted. Let's turn to military matters. Here in the military status screen, you can keep track of your empire manpower. This can be thought of as your military reserves that are used to crew your fleets and defend your systems. Empire manpower is drawn from your system's population growth until it reaches its max value. Uh, where is that listed? Empire Manpower right here. So we have a cap limit of 500 right now. Okay, secondly, the fleets... Uh, yeah, okay. Secondly, the fleets list enables you to track the status, composition, and upkeep of all your fleets in your empire. Click on a fleet to reveal the individual ships in that fleet. Note that you can double click on a fleet to locate it on the map. And we just have the one. In addition, the military status screen is where you can create new ship designs and edit existing ones based on the available ship holes. All your existing ship designs are listed here and in the list of constructions available for production in your systems. More ship designs can be unlocked by research via the text screen. Notice that this screen is, avail is accessible using the F5 shortcut. Okay, so if I click on patrol and I click edit, we're set up for exploration as witnessed by the probes, which I do want to keep. This right here, is a string gravitics engine oh wait wait slow down starfare right now only civilian ship holes are available to be used in ship designs come back to this screen when you have unlocked a military ship hole you don't want to be charging into battle with the wrong ships after all you can research new ship holes in the empire development quadrant of the tech screen for example thanks to efficient shielding okay uh, well, so these aren't available. We have high eye slugs, so we don't really have any room here is what it's saying to add anything. And this is an exploration ve vessel that's pretty much outfitted the way it needs to be outfitted. Are you sure you want to exit and lose your changes to this ship design? Yeah. Okay. Most star systems are composed of a diverse range of planet types. Unsurprisingly, many are initially uninhabitable and require advanced technologies to become colonizable. Of course, if you are unable to colonize any planets in a given system, then possession of the system will be impossible. Fear not, though. You can hover the cursor over the indicated areas beneath each planet to learn what technology you need to colonize that planet. So in this case, we need to be able to colonize lava. And uh, if we go to the text screen, I believe that shows up down here. Yeah, colonize lava. Of 
colonize gas giant. Technologies that permit the colonization of new planet types can be recognized by the colonization simple to the side of the technology. Early stage colonization technologies will allow the colonization of less extreme planetary biomes and will help your empire gain a foothold in the galaxy. Keep an eye out for prime galactic real estate. So these blinking ones are all the look at all the ones in science that lead to the ability to colonize these different kinds of worlds and they're spread out throughout here well not this one this one we're researching that's why it's blinking okay everything else though is i think a colonization yeah they all have flags on them Okay, uh, click back. So then we want to, since I'm not going to be making fleets, uh, let's go with that public private partnership. That's going to be a big boost to our science. It's going to take four turns. I want to see if we got a tundra planet in here. We do not. Here's a tundra. All right, so keep that in mind. And then we have a huge monsoon planet here. That still has a life form on it. Oh, well, we gotta go back there. Man, that's frustrating. Oh, and I can't until I've completed this. Yeah, dang it. Uh, I'm gonna not do that right now. I need to prioritize exploration. That's a missed opportunity that I'll have to come back for later on. Okay, end turn. Hey, we gained a population of Imperials. Nice. Okay, so do say the the planet Reina in say is now at a population level four of eight. It can it can carry eight. So once it starts getting into the red, people will be frustrated. Putting units of population in these slots will create overpopulation penalties for the system approval. Okay. Oh, also, I need I need different holes. So maybe I can type in a keyword here, hole. Okay. Here's efficient shielding. That's the one it was telling us about, and it grants us uh, access to the Igesre class. And the Yaranef class, this is a protector, so it's uh, defense oriented, and this one, so this is like a tank. It'll be made to soak up damage, but it doesn't dish anything out much, and this one's like your glass cannon. Both of them are small. So that's probably what we need to research next. All right. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it then. Oh, I haven't been to Heka yet. You discovered the planet Kairos. Kairos, when discovered, was a planet whose environment was so welcoming that it was taken by many pre-dust endless sects as their promised paradise. Unfortunately, conflict and strife exploded over its care and exploitation, and a Grey Goo nanobot plague was unleashed as a suicidal doomsday weapon that destroyed the, bios the biosphere. It exists today only as a memorial and object lesson. Wow. 
Can we get in there? Not yet. Okay. End turn. This is the star system Regal. Maybe Rigel. Rigel 1, small forest and colonizable. Kairos is a unique planet. It's a huge barren planet and inhospitable. And probably will remain so. Gosh, I just don't know what the right thing to do is when it comes to colonization. We've got options. But they don't seem to be good options to me. I want to check out Hecka. We got four planets in here. Actually, I can look. Large, arid, inhospitable. Hecka 1. Hecka 2, large savanna, inhospitable. Hecka 3, tiny savanna, inhospitable. And Hecka 4, Tiny in Savannah, Inhospitable. Well, this is probably a system we want. It's got four planets, two of them being large. Two of them, unfortunately, being small. But uh, they're all... Well, three out of the four are Savannah, and the other one is Arid. So once we research the technology, we'd be able to... Uh, This planet is too hostile to be colonized. I forget what these circles, what these blinking circles mean. Oh, I think it means they have anomalies on them. Okay. And I'm out of movement points. Let's go ahead and explore the system. Expedition successful on Hecka 2. Your analysis of the life form on planet Hecka 2 was successful. We found deciduous trees. And on this one, we have deciduous trees again. Now I need to wait for two turns so that we can get both of these anomalies. Click to select the next idle fleet. Okay. Oh, you're going to stay there. Cooperative quest started. Rumor of an academy. There are heroes and there are heroes. Legends of prowess, familiar to all, yet witnessed by none. The heroes of these tall tales are a dime a dozen. But in the leaders you have met and in the murmurs of your crews and colleagues, there are stories of other heroes living heroes whose actions and efforts have changed the course of battles and bureaucracies, whose actions and decisions have been pivotal in the rise and fall of empires. And when one speaks of these heroes, masters of dust and its vast powers, one also speaks of the place where they studied, uh, where they learned these feats of strength and genius. It is simply referred to as the Academy. Some seem to present it as a center of higher learning, while others mention it in tones more suitable to worship and epiphany. It would be good to know the truth of all this. It would be good if your ships were the first to make formal contact with it and meet its leaders, or leader, shrouded in mystery. So it's kind of like a Jedi Academy, right? You have a, sort of a, a, a priesthood element, and then uh, also... Um, a high value on intellectualism and, and learning. They are as few in number as they are great in power of the heroes of the galaxy. They learned their skills at a place simply referred to as the Academy. Be the first to find this place, and some of its secrets will certainly be yours. Backtrack the paths of heroes by exploring five atmospheric curiosities. Okay. Construction of public-private partnerships is now complete. 
And we have a political survey. The polls are in. Political surveys are important tools for understanding the likely results of forthcoming elections. If you want to get a better idea of the political support in individual systems, zoom in to the star system management view for the system in question. In one turn, your empire will see its first election. Good luck. The latest survey is in, it appears that the industrialist political party is in the lead, but who knows what might happen on election day. So we got, uh, the industrialists have 50% of the electorate. A very tiny 2% are militarists. 33% are ecologists and 15% are scientists. And what this right now at least reflects is where we have emphasized our constructions and our scientific research. So one, two, three. Okay, done. Zoom in. System representatives, three industrialists and one militarist. Oh, and here's the political sensitivity. Now this is down to this system. The other graph was showing us uh, our empire as a whole. Okay, um, do I need to put something in construction here? Yes. Let's go five, 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 25, three. I'm gonna go intensive cultivation. Wait a minute. What kind of dust income do we have? 34. Oh, we're only at six here now on food. Okay, let's go ahead and grab the sustainable farms. Okay. Uh, so, well, I did that. I did what it wanted me to. Do I have to click on it? This isn't high. This isn't unlocked for us yet. I believe I did what it wanted me to. So we're going to go ahead and end turn. Research is complete on the ubiquitous surveillance. Great. <laughs> Let's go to the text screen and go ahead and grab that efficient shielding. That's going to take us five turns. Tech stage unlocked in military quadrant. Um, upgraded coupled C5 AI. Look, there's the communist fist again. <laughs> basic reactive plating, basic ultra dense slugs, G war camps, basic uniform shielding, and basic sync laser. All right. Uh, do I have my probes back? I've got one. I can also uh, click this button and it'll take me straight to that fleet. One probe. And uh, star charts. Your analysis of the signal on planet Heka 3 was successful. The nodes linked to Heka have been revealed. Nodes revealed. Okay. Solo quest started. A new, a new host, Hoche. A group of archaeologists from your exploration party has come to you with a bizarre report. They claim to have seen a ghostly airship made of balloons and solar panels silently traversing the planet's skies. You are initially skeptical, but one of your historians insists that the airship matches the myth mythical description of Hoche, an ancient endless who watched from the skies as her home planet Kairos was c uh, converted to a gray goo by a nano plague. Man, that's sad, huh? So it ties directly into the Kairos story. Hoche is long dead with the rest of the endless and this planet could not possibly be Kairos. But the story seems to have captured the imaginations of your crew who are now speaking of founding a colony here. The myth of Hoche is strong among the crew, 
they believe a new colony of Hecka III would be an auspicious event for the Empire. Create an outpost on planet Hecka III or colonize its system. Well, there's our timer. Reward will be the Obelisk of Remembrance. What's this do? The Great Pillar... This great pillar in memory both of Hoche's sacrifice and Kairos's destruction is uh, made of the most valuable materials. I, I pause there because I'm like, what sacrifice? It said that she watched. It was a she, right? I'm scanning. Initially skeptical, ancient endless who watched from the skies as her home planet Kairos was converted to a gray goo by nanoplague. Okay, well, maybe there's more to that story because there doesn't, I don't, in that, in those two paragraphs, I don't read of any kind of a sacrifice. It just says that she died. She observed her planet being converted into gray goo, and then she died like the rest of the endless. At some point in time and over some circumstance from old age, for all we know, I don't know. Uh... Both of Hoche's sacrifice and Kairos's destruction is made of the most valuable materials currently known. It should stand as a memorial until the heat death of the universe. Oh, so there's some kind of a heat death. Maybe we have uh, the center of the cosmos blowing up like a, like a sun or something like that. It would give us 10 approval and 6 influence per temperate planet. That's pretty nice. Okay. And we would have to colonize Hecka Hecka 3 or colonize its system. Okay. B106805 solar nebula discovered, a disc-shaped cloud of gas and dust that will eventually accrete into a protostar and planetary system. For now, the nebula is a vast swirling cloud of danger and opportunity. The kindling materials of the center slowly warming over the millennia, while the halo glitters with the remnants of dead stars and dust. Effects plus 50 dust theater effects applied on space battles. Plus 5 dust gained per player combat point still alive at the end of the battle on fleet. Plus 25% extra experience on fleet. You must extend your system's influence over to receive its bonuses. Okay. And that is right here. Okay, in the meantime... Do I have another pro Where's my probes at? Here. Okay, so I have to wait another turn. Was there anything else I needed to do? Four turns here. Hecka 3 would have to be colonized. Or the system, which I would probably take Hecka 2 here as a large planet. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's going to end it for this episode, guys. We're on uh, overall turn number 17. I guess I could end turn. Kudos. You have accrued enough influence to pass your first law. Open the Senate screen via the control banner to learn more. And we will do that learning in the next episode. So let's save it. Overwrite. Well, this has been fun so far. I hope you guys are enjoying it, and I hope it's helpful. Uh, again, I'm Aesop Grimm. Thank you for coming by the channel. I hope all is well in your neck of the woods, and I will see you in the next episode where this story continues.